Hi, I'm Gideon Ariel of Root Source. Absolutely so happy. I'm, I'm without words to be here in Jerusalem. This is my friend Paul Calvert. There's a Bernard in there somewhere also, I think. <laughs> Move aside a second, Paul, and let's see if we can see. Move a little further. I still see you. I think that we'll be able to see here the Temple Mount. Because we are... Okay, come back in. Because we, uh, we are uh, doing this interview on the Haas Promenade, which is the Tayela, the promenade, the, the, uh, like the boardwalk of Jerusalem. It's not really a boardwalk, it's a stonewalk. And uh, instead of doing it by Zoom, uh, Paul here is an audio professional. So he said, no, I don't do stuff by Zoom. Anyway, so here we are. So Paul has, has been a friend of mine for, oh, how many years? Many, many years. Many, 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 many years. More, I think we met when I was still living in my lady, for more than 10 years. And uh, we're going to hear all about him. So, Paul, tell us a little bit about yourself and look into the camera. <laughs> well, I, I'm here. I live in Bethlehem, so it's very, very close to where we are at the moment. And I run a community Christian radio station uh, for the people in the community of Bethlehem. I've been here. This is my 20th year. I'm actually celebrating 20 years in the Holy Land. So I've, I've just celebrated my 50th birthday and Happy I'm birthday. celebrating 20 years in the Holy Land. So it's a very, very special year for me this year. And uh, I also go out and just do interviews with people in the land, uh, trying to get the good news stories. There's so much bad news. We want the good news stories. And we do the same for our radio station in Bethlehem. Uh, so we'll interview Palestinians. And the aim and the idea of that is to say, don't complain about your situation, but you get out there and you make a difference. If you be, we have that, we have, uh, I think we have a phrase in Hebrew like that. Atat yetov, akol yetov. If you be good, everything will be good. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably something like that in Arabic also. So that's really what we're aiming for, just to, re, to be a, a, a blessing for the community, both the Israeli side and the Palestinian side. That's very beautiful. And what about the Christian side? Well, the Christian community, we, there's so many things that are actually happening in Bethlehem. You look at the organizations that are in Bethlehem. There's so many Christian organizations that are doing great work in Bethlehem. The schools, the best schools are run by Christians. There's the, there's the children's hospital. There's the deaf place for the deaf people. There's lots of disabled charities that are out there in Bethlehem doing great, great work. I just went on to a, 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 a special Christmas party a few weeks ago, and it was for children with this terrible skin disease. And they were born with this, and it's like Oi. blisters. Oi. And they have to have cream put on them every uh, day and yeah, things yeah. like that. And we just went there just to bless them, encourage them. So there's lots of great things happening within the Christian community in Bethlehem. Now, how big is the Christian community in Bethlehem? It's very, very small. Very small. Yeah, very, very small indeed. I'm not sure what the percentage is. I think about 1%. I'm not sure whether it's 1% of Bethlehem. I'm talking evangelical Christians. You've got uh, Orthodox Christians as well. Uh, but the real evangelical Christian is very, very small. And when you say evangelical Christians, you're not talking or not only talking about uh, Westerners like yourself, but actual uh, people in the land. Bethlehem, yeah. per, uh, people who were born here, people whose grandparents were born here. Yeah, people who are in the land. People so, born. Arabic speakers? Yes, yeah. So that's about 1% of the Bethlehem uh, uh, population are evangelical Christians. Yeah, it's very, very small, very, very low. Yeah. I, I, I don't have my... Uh, uh, phone right now to be able to check on Wikipedia yes. how uh, how big uh, Bethlehem is, but that sounds very small. I think it's about 20, 27% altogether, but you go to the evangelical, about 1% to 3%. So, okay. So, yeah. 27% yeah. of Bethlehemites yeah. uh, call themselves Christian. Yeah. Okay, that's already a little bit more inf <laughs> uh, encouraging because, of course, before the, uh, pal before the, uh, the Oslo, or maybe even before that, um, Bethlehem was an absolute majority yeah. uh, Christian uh, city. We, I don't know. Again, you guys can look it up on Wikipedia. 90%, 80% were Christians as opposed to... And of course, it was a very small city back then and it's much bigger now, but we don't have to go into that now. What brought you to Israel and to Bethlehem? Well, I first came in 1996 uh, to do a volunteer in Jerusalem, uh, to be a volunteer in a church called St. Paul's Church. Wait a second. We know that you're 50 now. 1996 is about 25 <laughs> yeah. years ago. So, you, okay, you were a mere 25 years old. So I was helping. Had you ever been in Israel before? I had never been. I didn't know anything about anything. So I didn't know Palestine, Israel, anything like that. Knew nothing. Came in to be a volunteer and uh, to renovate a church. And actually, the, the, the first week that I came in on the Friday, there was a bus bombing in Jerusalem. Then the week after, there was a second one, which I actually heard and went to see. So that was my first experience of coming here to Israel. And uh, But I loved it, and I came back the next year that I would go and then come back for a month another time. What were you doing until then? 
Uh, I was working with an evangelist called Dr. Tony Stone. Mm -hmm. So traveling around the world and, and, and in, in the and UK. And how long have you been with Tony Stone? Um, altogether now, I've been with him for about uh, 25 years. So wait a second, you're still with him? Yes. And you've so, been here for 25 so years? coming to Israel was sort of one of my first outreach so trips. So what, what did you do before? Oh, so you, were, you, were, you knew him for maybe 30 years since you were 20 or so? Yeah, something like that. But yeah. what were you doing? Like, were you, were you uh, working? Were you uh, sleeping well, on your mother's couch? <laughs> I left mm -hmm. school at 16 and went to work for my father on the farm. Uh -huh. uh, and that was, it's sometimes hard to work with your family. Yeah, that's uh, right. And after three years, I left that. Then I went to work for a Christian book warehouse in my city called Send the Light. So I was working there for three years. We were sending books all around the world really? and into Israel as well. Of course. And then after that, um, I went to Youth with a Mission in Miami for a mission. Why so Wham? Right. Yes. Youth with, why Wham? Yeah. yeah. So I went to Miami, did an outreach in Panama, then came back and Tony picked me up and I got to work with him. Uh, and that's sort of how the story developed because he was part of the, he was the chairman of the board for the organization that has the church here What's it in called? Jerusalem. Uh, Focus on Israel. Focus on Israel. Yeah. Okay, you got my vote. Yeah. So you would call yourself a missionary? I'd call myself... Uh, I'll tell you why I ask. Yeah. Because it sounds like you're on a mission. Yeah. Now, uh, many of our millions of viewers yeah. might think a missionary is just somebody yeah. who the only thing they care about is turning Jews into Christians. Yeah. But... That's not your mission. My, well, my aim is to be just to be a light to the world. You're which, light to the is, world. Which is what Jesus was. That's know? right. You know? And of course, that is what Jews are also mandated to do. As we mm. say in Hebrew, you maybe even have heard that phrase. Mm. Or la goyim, mm. a light unto the nations. Yeah. So nations, world, I don't know how, if, that's, if there's anything, uh, if those don't overlap completely. But uh, if, if Jesus was a Jew, then he was doing pretty well. Yeah. If, uh, if he was uh, trying to be a light unto the nations. And those who follow him are trying to do the same, as you said. Well, thank you, first of all, very, very much for bringing light to the Holy, to the Holy Land. And uh, the fact that you've been here for such a long time is just amazing. I know. It's a miracle. I, God, told, God spoke to me about coming here. I was in the church in Jerusalem. I was sitting, on the, sitting there, and I really felt God spoke deep into my heart the words, come build the walls of Jerusalem. And you think, did God really speak to me? Is that really huh? what I felt? You know? Hello? Was that really Check true? Check your ears. And then a few weeks later, I was going to take a friend into a museum. And it was the King David Museum in Jerusalem. And on, as, on, on, the Mount, uh, on Mount Zion? Uh, Jaffa King, Gate. Oh, okay. King David Tower Museum? Of, Tower of David. Tower of David yes, Museum, yes. Tower of David. I always get it mixed up. And while I was walking in there, there was a sign on the wall that said this, come build the walls of Jerusalem. And it's, it's from the book of Nehemiah. I didn't know it was from the book of Nehemiah. Right. Uh, and I felt, that's it. God's told me. I'm speaking. So I, I left. And you could say, well, did God really speak to you? Uh, did he really speak to you? Did you know? I left and I came here in 2002. And I've been here for 20 years. And I've had a visa. So did God speak to me? Well, if God can't tell you to go to a country and then say, sorry, I'm not going to give you a visa. Excuse I've me. had the visa all the way through. There is a restaurant here? No. 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 Sorry about that. When you when you record outside, then sometimes people uh, interrupt. Uh, info, income. Hello. Thank you. Um, so you've been here for twenty years. Yeah. You've been focusing on a radio program in Bethlehem mm -hmm. and uh, participating in the uh, evangelical Christian community in Bethlehem, yeah. helping them out as much as you can. All this time, and of course, running, uh, doing other uh, recordings of interviews yeah. with uh, movers and shakers here in the Holy Land. Yeah, I first, I first started off in Jerusalem. I was in Jerusalem for about 13 years, and then we went into Bethlehem because we developed the radio station. We had the place there. Wow. So we're, we're, we're based there now as well. So I remember meeting you, and I came to your place in Jerusalem. You were in the basement of some yeah, church. in on, the church, St. Paul's Church. Just, just, just by Meir Sharim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In case they ever needed a tenth man for a minion, you were there. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. And, uh, and what does the future look like for you? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm still waiting for my new visa. So I'm um, two weeks waiting for that. Uh, so God willing, we will receive that and have another great year speaking into lives and, and, and getting interviews of people, you know, getting great stories, great encouragements as well. So we are, we're excited to see what's going to happen. All of this work that you're doing is within the framework of Tony's Focus on Israel Ministries. Uh, Tony Stone? It's, it's, yes, within the focus of uh, 
Tony Stone in, in his his support work, and also Crossroads Radio. We're supported very much by Crossroads Radio. So those, those are two organizations that yep. uh, support activities, and you you're doing a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. That's great. Can you tell tell us a little bit about um, besides me, of course, who you've interviewed that is re you really felt that made a dent in Christian Jewish relations? Um, well, there's there's quite a number of people who we've interviewed as far as Jewish Christian relations. So you're one of them. Uh, Jonathan Feldstein as well. Uh, I've interviewed Rabbi Dove Lipman. He's a great guy. Uh, and I interviewed him a few weeks ago about his new organization. So I keep Olim. He's such a nice guy. He's such a great guy. And I know he's part of Bridge Builders as well. Uh -huh. And uh, Yad Le Olim. So yeah, Yad Le Olim, Olim, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, just many, many people. We've interviewed so many people. Uh, I do a show every week. So I think I reckon I've made about 800 shows altogether. So there's a lot of shows that we've done. A lot of people getting their stories and just, just getting some great stories. About 800 shows and i'd guess that you haven't uh, done like with me you've done more than one but i guess that you've you've interviewed about 500 people yeah that's a lot of people wow, wow that's a lot of bridge builders and i'm always looking for more people to interview <laughs> that's wonderful yeah family odd so wh what do you think is important about building bridges between jewish people and christian people i think there's been so much negative in the past there have been so many bad things that have happened uh, and as Christians, we need to start building the bridges and showing our love and support for the Jewish people. The Jewish people have been through so many bad things. I start to get the feeling now that, it's th that the tide is turning and Christians are starting to go through bad things. When you look at in other countries and the way that ISIS has grown and fundamental Islam has growing, grown. So we, we, today we're seeing problems within anti-Semitism. So there's still problems today for the Jewish people mm -hmm. and very much for so sure. there are problems for the Christian community, particularly in like Nigeria and things like that. And I think we need to stand shoulder to shoulder, side by side, defending each other. Um, your book is my book. So we need to stand strong and stand solid. And uh, we're brothers in Christ. You know, we, we maybe don't always agree with the same things, but we're still brothers. When you say brothers in Christ, you're thinking of, is it possible that you're thinking of one thing and I'm thinking of another thing? Is that okay? Well, we, pro we probably are thinking of different things. We, if we if we start debating, we're not going to agree. That's but right. That doesn't matter. I, I, you, know? I, you see that today all the time. Yeah. People seem to be on social media, and they're trying to find where people don't agree with them a hundred percent, and then they cancel them. Yeah. But I say, you know what? I know that you don't agree with me a hundred percent. Yeah. Even my wife doesn't agree with me a hundred percent. Imagine that. Even I don't even agree with myself a hundred percent most of the time. So let's put aside the things that we disagree upon. Yeah. Focus on the 90% of the things that we agree upon yeah. and uh, get things done over here. Well, the Bible is the thing that we can agree on. You can say that again. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. The Bible, the Old Testament, we can definitely agree on I that. think so. Yeah. I think so. And, and again, from my perspective, it seems to me that this is also a relatively new thing. Mm. That uh, for hundreds of years, thousands of years, Christians hadn't been reading their Bible, certainly hadn't been reading their Old Testament. It's mm. been the New Testament. You know, they'll maybe mention a, a verse from the Old Testament, only how it connects to the New Testament. They spend all the time on Galatians or Ephesians or, or Corrosions or I don't know what. <laughs> and, but now I see that many Christians are being called by God to look not at the Old Testament, but the basis mm. of the Testament. Testament, what does Testament mean? It, it, it means giving witness so this is what God is witnessing to the world. And had there not been that basis of the Old Testament, of the Tanakh, then there wouldn't have been a New, Ta a New Testament, and there wouldn't have been any Jesus either. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, 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 and again, I'm not saying this because this is what I believe. This is what people have told me. Yeah. This is what people are saying. This is why they believe this. Well, Jesus was a Jew. If of you course. hate the Jewish people, then you've got to hate Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, that brings me to another question. Uh, the elephant in the room. You're in Bethlehem. Yeah. It's a city of the PA, the Palestinian Authority. You say the word Palestinian to Israelis and the, and the, uh, the hair starts going up on the, on the arms. How much anti-Semitism do you see in, Beth in Bethlehem? Um, I don't really pick anything of anti-Semitism. I apologize, it's a little negative it's, it's, question, it's, but I'm, I'm challenging you a bit. Uh, obviously, there's a political situation. People don't like the political situation. Uh, sometimes you do see pictures on Facebook. Palestinians will put pictures up. Uh, so there is things there. I personally don't really take uh, here anything anti-Semitic. I, I hear negativity, but I don't see anything particularly anti-Semitic. But I do know it is there and it's out there. And have you had the opportunity 
to maybe take the opportunity and talk to somebody who might be a little bit more negative than positive and maybe tell them to open up their eyes. Maybe you don't have to be so negative. Well, we do have debates. Uh, I've got some really? friends. We had some just, just debates just the other day with some, we had some friends. I've got some Palestinian friends and then some friends came over from another country and we're sitting there talking about it. And I'm, you know, it's like, look, the Bible, Genesis, I will give you this land. It's an eternal covenant, you know. And, and we're, t we're talking about evangelical uh, Christian Bethlehemites. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and some of them don't agree. They, they, some of them do agree. You don't know where, to, you know, you'll find people who agree with it. They believe the land belongs to the Jews. And you'll find some people who don't. No, no, no. It all changed in the book of Romans. Mm. Uh, but my belief is God doesn't change. Mm -hmm. He said, I will give you this land. It's an eternal covenant. If God is going to give me eternal life, is he going to change his, li his mind in a few years time? Of course he's not. Eternity is eternity. And that's what I believe. Well, that is absolutely wonderful. We're going to break here. Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations on being a bridge builder. You've been here for 25 years. 20 years. 20 years. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, tw 20 years, definite, 25 or, for a little, you know. I, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about when you, yeah. uh, when, you yeah. switch, when you switch over the record, as we say in Israeli, yeah. that you will be here for most of your life, and uh, you will continue to be a blessing for, uh, for all of the nations. Amen. Tadarabah. Thank you very much, Paul Calvert.